Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being with me today as we bring you up to date on some of the weekend's activities. You didn't ask about the boating death, so I'll briefly tell you about that before we get into the main issues. We had a gentleman that was apparently out drinking for the evening on the chain of lakes, and late at night he was zipping through one of the canals and he lost control of his boat and he ran into some cypress trees and the next morning some people who lived on the lake discovered him underneath his boat wedged up into some cypress trees where he was deceased. That was a horrible way to end a night that started out as a fun night but once again alcohol, drugs, water, boating, fast speeds, whether you're in a car or on a boat, don't mix. Unfortunately, he paid, paid, paid a horrible, horrible price for his mistake that night. But here's another event that I'm going to talk to you about that frustrates us very badly. It's young men and women dying. And they're dying because other young men and women are shooting them. And on this particular occasion, some folks from the Orlando area rented an Airbnb, and they rented this Airbnb at 308 Robin Road in Davenport, which is right at the county line of Osceola and Polk County. They rented this house in order to have a birthday party for a one-year-old child and they invited friends and family over. And this is the development that this house is in. So the family arrives Friday night. They work all through Saturday morning to get ready for the party. And at about 3 p.m. On, on Saturday afternoon, the party begins. Well, that's reasonable. Well, about 11 o'clock at night, our victim one, as we will call him, he is a black male, 27 years of age, a young man, not yet 30 years of age, still trying to figure life out, receives several phone calls. And then about 1230, which would have been early Sunday morning, people are still there for the one-year-old's birthday party. I'm certain the one-year-old by this time has crashed. He's not interested in the party any longer. But he takes two plates of food out to this mid-size vehicle that's in the roadway. He apparently delivers the food, and I say apparently, and I'll tell you that in a minute. Turns around and walks toward the house. And there is a volley of gunshots that rings out. He is knocked down from the gunfire. He jumps up and is now trying to get into the house when the suspects who have started to drive off back back up. One of the suspects jumps out of the mid-sized vehicle and shoots another volley of rounds at suspect one, I mean victim one. Now understand that in the process of hearing the first volley of gunshots, Victim two, who is a 26-year-old black female, she runs to the door, and as she's running to the door, she is shot through the door, and she's struck in the thigh, and the great news is that young lady is going to make a full recovery. She opens the door, and they drag in victim one, who has a multiple gunshot wounds, and the vehicle flees from the neighborhood. When they get to the front of the neighborhood in the area of the entrance, they, we find two plates of discarded food. Now, all of that is a mystery to us. Did they not like the free meal? Was it served to them cold? Did they use that as a ruse to get him outside so that they could shoot and kill him? All of that's under investigation. They flee back toward the Orlando area. We have some video from stores that indicate that this vehicle has fled. We don't know who the suspects are. We know and, and highly suspect 
two suspects, a driver and the passenger who jumped out the second time to finish shooting. We know there are two different kinds of casings from two different firearms at the crime scene. But what's interesting to know is that this is all too often what we see. Young men dying, a young lady shot. Now, this was not the traditional house party that we normally see that ends up in a shooting. However, there were conversations between our apparent suspect and our victim causing our victim to take two plates of food at 12.30 in the morning out to these folks, and they subsequently shot and killed him. He died despite our best efforts and Polk Fire's best efforts to save his life at Osceola, at a Osceola hospital. So we need the community's help. We're paying $5,000 cash money through Crime Stoppers. You don't have to get involved. You don't have to give us your name. Just give us the information, and we too will put you in for the five grand and we'll solve this murder. We owe it to the family. We owe it to their mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, and we're going to work diligently until we find out who murdered these people. But make no mistake about it, it is not the first time Someone has come from the Orlando area to the northeast area, I-4, 27, Point Siena, Davenport area, to rent an Airbnb to ultimately become the victim of a murder. And we're pretty well tired of it. We were tired of it when it happened the first time. And it's happen happening periodically. So at the end of the day, it's not all right for young kids to kill young kids. And we're not going to allow that. We're going to find who these people are and hold them accountable, accountable for that. And that's important because no one has the right to kill or shoot someone else. Now, by the grace of God, the one-year-old, who I suspect by this time was tucked away in bed, s survived all of this without any gunshots. However, we had an, a recent one, I say recent within the last year, it didn't happen at that time at an Airbnb, but it was kids shooting kids where two teenage girls were in bed asleep when some gangbangers went to shoot up what they thought was the rival's house. They got the wrong house and shot two teenage girls. And then 15 minutes later, they shot up another house and shot up another teenage girl. Now you think, oh my gosh, what's happening in Polk County? Newsflash. That's happening all across the state of Florida and all across the United States of America. We've got to respect life. We've got to respect the dignity of life. And I can assure you of one thing, that if you come here and shoot someone, we will chase you to the ends of the earth until we get you locked up in jail. You're not going to kill people in this county and get away with it. Well. So we, we had those events over the weekend. We had other events that occurred, but here was how we started the work week. This happened at about 6.11 this morning at Highway 60 and 6.30, which is at the southeast corner of our camp, where a 15-year-old guy, did you hear what I said? He was 15, was driving his 12-year-old sister to school in Frostproof to the middle school. It goes without saying, 15-year-old cannot drive an automobile by himself, but he was, and he turned in front of a red Dodge pickup truck driven by a 50-year-old man who was unable to avoid the crash, T-boned the vehicle. As a result, the 15-year-old driver of the 2020 Traverse that turned in front of pickup truck, the red Dodge pickup truck, received minor injuries, but the 12-year-old who was on the passenger side where the initial impact was is in critical condition and she needs our prayers that she, one, survives and two, not only survives but survives some pretty significant injuries as well. But that's not the end of it. There's more. 
So there's a 34-year-old man from Melbourne who sees this horrible crash. We'll call him the Good Samaritan. He stops his vehicle and gets out to help. While he's out helping, a 2012 Honda van then strikes the red pickup truck that's already been involved in the crash, knocks the red pickup truck into the Good Samaritan and kills him. Do the people stay at the scene? No, they don't stay at the scene. The vehicle's crashed, it's too damaged to drive, so they jump out and flee. Did they stop to help the 12-year-old, the 15-year-old, like the Good Samaritan? No. Did they try to help the guy that ultimately died? No. Why? They're too busy fleeing, running from their responsibility. We need help with that. Call Crime Stoppers. There's a $5,000 reward for that. Now, we are working on the vehicle, but of course, our early information doesn't help us at all. It turns out it's a scrapped vehicle out of Arizona. Did you hear what I said? So there's not a registration, so we can look at the registration and initially just transfer our information from owner to owner till we find out who is operating it this morning. There's a lot of investigative work that we are doing in order to solve that case. We have had our bloodhounds and our aviation and our deputies out looking because they fled into the woods. This is a very remote area of the county. We want them in jail, and the community can help us with that because these guys are wandering through the swamps and the woods out there, and they're going to come out into one of the neighborhoods or onto one of the highways and try to get a ride from someone. And that's why we need to be there to make sure we're there to intercept them before they can get away. Because who knows where they may be from since this vehicle is a scrapped vehicle out of Arizona. We need to find them today, find them rapidly today. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Certainly. For, first and foremost, Airbnb, and uh, we use it Airbnb, but all of those short-term rentals have gotten better recently. But it's because we've been putting immeasurable pressure on them that, hey, either you clean up your act or we're going to pass legislation that's going to cripple you. You've got to stop renting to people that's having these massive parties and shooting up these neighborhoods. So to their credit, they have gotten remarkably better. On this particular house, as you can see, it wasn't one of the larger houses. And it was four people in one family that rented the house. And it was, it, this party was friends and immediate family. There was not the hundreds of people that we normally see. But what we know is that one of the guests there, for whatever reason, was on the phone and invited these people there. And those people, when they came there, had the intention of shooting and killing him. We are still working through all of the details and there's a lot of investigative work to occur. I'm not sure about whether or not there was a call there earlier. It's not unusual for us to go and deal with disturbances in the short-term rentals. These folks come from far and wide to the short-term rentals. 99 out of 100 of them are coming here to go to Disney, to go to Universal, to have a family weekend, and there's zero problems. But we answer calls every weekend as a result of people who come into the short-term rentals and they're partying late into the night because they're on vacation on, or on holiday. And other neighbors who are working people have to get up the next morning and go to work. So it's not unusual for us to handle disturbances. We can t 
tell you if we were at that specific house earlier in the evening. But the interesting part about this is why did he call these people to come to the house in the first place? When they came there, he took food out to them, so obviously he knows them. There's a relationship. And, you know, why did they shoot him? And then they carried the food with them till they got to the front of the neighborhood and then tossed it. They probably had no appetite after they just killed a man. So what was the relation of the victim and the baby? The victim and the baby? I'm not sure what that was. But they were all friends and close friends and family. Sir, um, you already kind of alluded to this, but the, the fact that someone would, would open fire, they probably they may or may not have known that there was a one-year-old child in there, but there was. Um, what does that say about the danger this child was in and, and the people who would do this so carefully? Yeah, first and foremost, they don't care. When they, when they arrive to have these shootouts, I mean, this is like the Old West. They don't care who they shoot. We have seen in the past throughout all across the country, they have a shootout between rival gangs, between rival people, retaliation. They shoot kids, they shoot innocent people in houses next door, they shoot up the wrong house. They are evil people that need to be arrested. And quite frankly, when we arrest these folks, more times than not, the guns they have, newsflash, are stolen. And many times the guns that are stolen are stolen from your cars because you don't lock the car at night and take your firearm inside. So when you are not a responsible gun owner, you're feeding the gangs, you're feeding the murderers. And we see that over and over. Yes, ma'am. I don't have that information. They told me it was a small party relative to what we call these huge parties that we see. So we're not talking about a massive number of people at this particular party. This truly, and that's why it's suspicious to us, this was truly family and close friends. And based upon that, it's not like these, what we, we call block parties, where there's hundreds of people, 100 people that show up. That was not the environment here at all. So it's not like there's a lot of people, and they invite their friends, and it's, oh, yeah, my gangbanger, they call them their ops, is there. Well, I'll come shoot up the ops. I'll get some street cred. I'll get rid of him, and then I'll run back to Orlando. With newsflash, they're not just shooting up people in Orlando. The Orlando people are shooting up people in the neighboring counties, too, and we're over it. Now, we have a new state attorney in Orange County, he needs to make sure, and I know he will, that we don't bond these people or let these people out that have guns and are shooting at each other. So we've got to put people in jail that have a proclivity to steal firearms and then shoot people with them. In the um, accident uh, case, do you suspect that the person who didn't stop, that they had a reason to not stick around? Well, Yes, this was not our first rodeo. Okay, while I'm taking a wild guess, they're illegal, they have no driver's license, they have a suspended license, they have no insurance, they've got a car that's not legally registered, they can't legally register it, so possibly stolen. So pick any one of those common denominators and they'll fit these guys when we catch them. We are actively involved in the investigation and certainly will be asking those tough questions. Uh, why was your 15-year-old driving your 12-year-old to school? So that question will be answered. And certainly, regardless of a traffic citation for allowing them to allow their 15-year-old inappropriately drive, that pales in comparison to the horrible injuries to their children today as a result of not being responsible adults. Quick question about the shooting. In on Rodden Road, I noticed there were some surveillance cameras there that looked like they might be counties uh, owned. They were kind of in the middle. Is that something that you guys are looking at? And are those there for safety concerns? Or I don't usually see that in other neighborhoods. 
What, what we have in many neighborhoods, the homeowners association puts up cameras and we're thankful for those cameras. So any cameras that the homeowners associations have put up, obviously we'll be looking at that footage to, to see what we can glean from it. We're in, in fact, we're in the process of that now. When we have a homicide such as this one last night, where it's not a smoking gun and the suspect and the victim are there, we immediately send an intelligence team there that begins a canvas and seeking out the videos from the different houses or from the homeowners associations. Sure. The, the Good Samaritan that, that was killed, I believe, was a 34-year-old man from Melbourne, Florida. Yeah, my heart breaks for him here. We've got a, a responsible American that stopped to help at a horrible crash, and it was a devastating crash. And as a result of him being a Good Samaritan, uh, being the kind of person you would always want to stop and help at a crash. He's deceased this day. And why is he deceased this day? Because you've got some morons driving this old POS van and they can't see this big crash in the middle of the road with cars all twisted around and they slam into the red truck, knocking it into our good person and killing him. And then, because their vehicle won't run any longer, they jump out and flee from the scene because they don't care. And that's the big problem we have, whether it's one of these shootings or this kind of event that at this crash scene, they don't care about their fellow man. Now, the people who do help, and he died for his efforts today, and my heart breaks for him. And I'm sorry for that 12-year-old and 15-year-old and their parents. Even if the parent allowed them to drive them to school, they didn't intend for that to happen. But once again, you have parental accountability and responsibility. You have accountability and responsibility as a citizen or a, or a human being. And the overwhelming majority of the people in this community, in this state, in this nation are responsible people. And I'm grateful for them. But that's not the ones that create this kind of mayhem. But the rest of society has got to say, time out. We are over you. We are over it. We want the system to appropriately take them into custody and present them before a court. And upon conviction, they need to go to jail. Go to jail. It's a wonderful place. It keeps dangerous idiots away from the good people in the community. Jail's a wonderful thing. Well, sir, we've already sent out a telecommunicator call that if they see some wandering through the neighborhood to let us know because those folks are desperate and they need to get away. So they'll be stealing a car if they haven't already. They'll be taking your car keys if they have to. They'll come kick your door open and take your car keys because their intent is to get away from this area. And we've been looking for them since the event occurred. Now, we were delayed with our air support for a little while because we had to get the air flight ambulances in first and get the injured out. So we weren't able to work a tight perimeter early because we had to stay out of the way of the helicopters air flighting people out. Obviously, protecting the life of those kids had to be paramount. So we tightened up. We sent our, our air support out they, they worked it for four or five hours. We'll give it a breather to give them time to come back out, and then we'll, we'll put our air support back in again. We also will communicate with everyone that lives in that quadrant in an, an effort to get some help there. And someone will call if, they, if they've seen anything. Okay? Thank you all for being with me today. Take care. See you later.
during the day on Saturday, there were about 19 or 20 people at that party. 